Welcome to PGTV News. Here are our top stories. Lakeland Police Headquarters is getting a makeover. Find out why the makeover is needed and how much it will cost. Florida Polytechnic students are launching rockets. Find out when and where you can see them take flight. Hello and welcome to PGTV News. I'm Stephen Barnes. And I'm Lauren Lingell. Thank you for tuning in. Our report begins in Lakeland, where the Lakeland Police Headquarters is getting a makeover. The remodeling project will cost about $930,000. The building was constructed in 1993, and at that time there were about 287 employees. Some of the areas that will be renovated are the front desk area, several of the briefing rooms, property and evidence areas, and the detective area, as well as some additional office space will be added. The cost for, of the renovations does not include furniture or upgraded communication systems. And also in Lakeland, the Lakeland Police Athletic League will hold its National Mentoring Day on April 28th at Tigertown. There will be displays from the Lakeland Police Department as well as the Lakeland Fire Department. Live music, step teams, bounce houses, Food and merchandise will also be provided. And Lakeland Police Chief Larry Giddens is scheduled to speak along with Omega Man, the anti-bullying figure. He goes to my gym. Yeah? Yeah, he's awesome. Buff. Lakeland Electric will hold a customer academy for those who are interested in how electricity is made and delivered. There will be four classes every other Tuesday beginning on April 17th. The classes will run from 6 p.m. till 8 p.m. and dinner will be provided. If you're interested in attending, please visit lakelandelectric.com forward slash customer academies. That's pretty cool. It's always neat when they uh, open these kinds of things up for the public. I really love it when people teach me something mm -hmm. that I don't know a lot about and then I have dinner. Yeah, <laughs> and then you can talk to your friends and sound smarter than you actually Absolutely. are. Absolutely. That's my other favorite thing. <laughs> in Winter Haven, Polk State is one of 16 schools nationwide to win a $67,000 grant to help build an active learning center using steel case education furniture designed to encourage student engagement and success. Construction on the learning center is set to begin this summer. Polk State was among more than 1,000 applicants looking for funding for this particular project. Polk State was the only winner in Florida. The, winners, the winning schools can pick among four designs for the classroom space. GLT, Total Office, will be working with Polk State and Steelcase to install the learning space. Steelcase Education will work with the winning schools over a two-year period to assess and research the impact of the newly designed spaces. The grant recipients are also invited to participate in an annual symposium to share insights and best practices using the space. Garden Fest. It's going to take place April 28th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is a partnership with the University of Florida's Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences and the Polk County Extension Service. The plants for sale were cultivated by Master Gardener volunteers. This sale will include native Florida-friendly plants, bromeliad, succulents, orchids, and edibles. Master Gardener volunteers will be on hand to assist customers in plant selection. The event will be held at the Polk County Agriculture Center at 1702 U.S. 17 and 98 South in Bartow. For more information, call 863-519-1041. Several Polk County utility providers are offering a rebate of up to $100 toward the purchase of an efficient water-saving toilet. Older toilets use more than 3.5 gallons per flush, whereas newer, low-flush toilets use 1.28 gallons per flush. If your home was built before 1994 and no new toilets have been installed since 1995, your old toilet will qualify for the rebate. The new toilet must be low-flow and labeled as a WaterSense toilet. This rebate program has other requirements too, so visit your utilities website and look for the conservation or rebate tab for more information. The Southwest Florida Water Management District would like to encourage water conservation year round and April is Water Conservation Month. One of the driest months of the year, April marks the peak demand season for public water suppliers. Did you know that leaks are the biggest water wasters and they can occur both inside and outside of your home. You can use your water meter to check for leaks by turning off all the faucets and water using appliances and make sure that no one uses water during the testing period. 
You wait for the water heater and the ice cube makers to refill and for regeneration of water softeners. Go to your water meter and record the current reading. Wait 30 minutes. Remember, no water should be used during this period. And you'll read the meter again. If the reading has changed, then there's a good chance you probably have a leak. Uh, for more information about water conservation, please visit the Swift Mud website at watermatters.org forward slash conservation. <laughs> All right, well, it's now time for this week's health tip. Here is Nicole Riley. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Nicole Riley, and I'm here to talk to you about Stress Awareness Month. Most people experience stress at some point in their life. Adults, teens, and even children experience stressful times. April is Stress Awareness Month, and it's a time of year to bring awareness to the effects stress, ha stress can have on a person. At times, stress can be beneficial. It can help people develop the skills they need to deal with possible threatening situations throughout life. However, being in a constant or extreme state of stress is bad for both the mind and the body. Stress can be induced by a sudden traumatic event or even just the expectations and pressures of a daily life. Feeling emotional and nervous and having trouble sleeping and eating can also be normal reactions to stress. Getting the right care and support can help reduce stressful feelings and symptoms. Here are some of the healthy ways you can deal with stress. Number one, take care of yourself. This can be done by eating a healthy diet and incorporating well-balanced meals into your daily routine, or it can even be exercise and getting plenty of sleep. That can also be very important procedures and taking care of yourself. Number two, it's also important that you talk to other people. Share your problems and how you are feeling and coping with a parent, a friend, counselor, doctor, or even a pastor. Number three, avoid drugs and alcohol. This may seem to help with stress in the moment, but in the long run they create additional problems and increase the stress you are already feeling. Number four, take a break. If there are events or circumstances in your life that are causing you stress, try to take a break from them or distance yourself from the situation. Sometimes stepping away can help gain perspective and rest from the situation. It's also important to recognize when you need more help. If problems continue or are causing deep mental and physical stress, talk to a psychologist, a social worker, or even a professional counselor. Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Well, we have to take a quick break. When we return, we'll tell you about Florida Polytechnic students who are sending rockets on high. Welcome back to PGTV News. On April 15th, a group of students from Florida Polytechnic will participate in a rocket launch at Clegg Sod Farm in Bunnell, Florida. These students have the right stuff and hope to get great results on their launch. Here's Sherry McCullough with the story. At Florida Polytechnic University, Students work on various projects and experiments. A very special group of students will be attending the NASA Hybrid Motor Competition to test their rocket to see if it can fly as high as 2,000 feet in the air. Our group originally came together from the space club at Poly. It's called Astro. We were proposed to the competition by Dr. Horton, and the competition had already been um, around at the school since October and um, we decided that we were going to, she brought us on board um, for our expertise and the research we had already done before in rocketry and we were all still really new at it and decided um, that we would definitely have the time to help and use it as a segue to uh, move forward and te do testing on a smaller scale of our larger rocket. Putting a rocket together is no easy task. Getting it to fly takes time. Doing all this on a budget may discourage some, but Florida Poly's rocket team stepped up to the challenge. One of the largest challenges of the rocket design was conducting the simulations. The simulations were extremely important because the competition requires that we have to get as close as possible to 2,000 feet in altitude. And we don't have any sort of electrical systems to slow the rocket down. So if it starts going over we have to be able to, to stop it ahead of time. And the best way to do that is to do simulations that get it as close to the 2,000 feet mark as possible. That will get us um, large points in the competition, and going over is actually uh, worse than going under, so the simulations are extremely important in the competition. 
This team understands winning big will come with time, but right now their goals are realistic and their confidence is high. So our goal for the project really is just to see it fly. As a first year team and as a new engineering school in Florida, we really don't have a lot to work on. We don't have any you know, legacy before this. So everything we do up to this point is really just a culmination of just trying to get this thing to fly. Ideally, we would love to succeed at the competition, but I think just seeing the rocket take off and our, all of our work coming together and, and, and all the research being done and, and the accurate flight simulations, just proving all the math involved is more, um, more important to us than, than winning at the competition. Although I, I have high hopes, I, I think we'll succeed. What an awesome story. Did, uh, I mean, the, the work that goes into that and who would think that it was more important to have that rocket slow down before 2,000 right, feet? Right, right. When he said 2,000 feet, I was like, holy oh, cow, that's, that's, like, that's, like a, <laughs> that's like a real rocket. And then they're like, yeah, but we have to figure out how to slow it down so it doesn't go higher. So what? That, uh, yeah, that's never been a, a care of mine, but <laughs> I am so glad that, that they are learning and and Yeah, and Florida Poly seems happen. to be uh, top in the news here. A lot oh, recently. Oh yeah. yeah, dominating a little bit. Well, it's now time for our entertainment update with Dion Spires. Dion, take it away. Thanks guys. Here's what you can check out next week for entertainment around Polk County. Southeastern University will present a number of performances next week, starting with their Night at the Opera on April 14th. Featuring a number of opera scenes, the show will be held at Polk Museum of Art in Lakeland and will begin at 7 p.m. Poetry fans may want to check out Southeastern's Intersection of Images and Words on April 17th. This event will combine original poetry by Southeastern students with the artwork of many famous artists at the Polk Museum of Art. This free performance will begin at 6.30 p.m. and a discussion and reception will follow. April 19th, Southeastern will perform their contemporary band concert at their very own Bush Chapel. This performance will begin at 7.30 p.m. For more information on these events, visit www.seu.edu. Also next week, Florida Southern College continues their run of Julius Caesar. This original interpretation by director Paul Bowick sets the classic story of Caesar within a present-day all-women's prison. This unique take only has three performances next weekend before it will close, so be sure to catch it April 12th, 13th, and 14th. For more information, visit www.flsouthern.edu. If you're looking for some outdoor fun, you can head to the Westgate River Ranch Resort for the weekly Saturday Rodeo. Next week's event will take place April 14th at 7.30 p.m. And don't forget that the Sun and Fun Fly-In will continue through Sunday, April 15th. This only comes around once a year, so you don't want to miss your chance to get in on the excitement. For more information on their schedule and how you can attend, visit www.flysnf.org. That's all I've got this week, but tune in next week to find out what's coming up in your Polk County community. And for more information on the Polk County art community, be sure to tune in to Out and About Art Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on PGTV. Thank you, Dion. And now it's time for sports. Let's see what Neil Duncan's got for us. Hey, thanks, guys. Another busy week in sports. We want to congratulate Winter Haven High School girls basketball. We told you last week they went up to the Big Apple to New York City to play in the Geico National Tournament, but unfortunately they lost 62-49 to in the semifinals to Hamilton Heights out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, but they did a great job representing not only Winter Haven, Polk County, but the state of Florida. Now shifting our attention to the Lakeland Magic. Unfortunately, the Lakeland Magic traveled up to Erie, Pennsylvania on Saturday and lost 96 to 90 to the Erie Bayhawks. It was still a great season for the Lakeland Magic as they made the playoffs in their inaugural season. And of course, we're looking forward to more hard hitting magic action next year at the RP Funding Center. Now turning our attention to the Lakeland Flying Tigers, they kicked off their 2018 campaign on Thursday, April 5th at Publix Field at Joker Marchant Stadium. You definitely want to get out there and see the Lakeland Flying Tigers soon. The Florida Tarpons will be in action on April 14th. This is their seventh season in Arena Football League, but their first at the RP Funding Center. Tickets now on sale for the 705 kickoff against the Richmond Rough Riders. Again, that contest will be April 14th. Thank you for the sports report, Neil, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. Remember to tune in again next week for another installment of PGTV News. We'll see you next time.